Welcome to this episode of Clarity Compressed. My name is Paul J. Daly. I will be your host. And today we're talking about what is the ROI of a single piece of content? <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. What is the ROI of a single piece of content? This conversation and this thought came back up into my mind this morning as I was having a, a conversation, a meeting with my business partner, Kyle Mountseer, for the new company we founded called Contagious Auto. And by the way, we do a daily podcast every single weekday, Monday through Friday. It's called The Contagious Five, F-I-V-E, The Contagious Five. It's a lot of fun. It's short, five to 15 minutes, quick shot to start your day. I hope you check it out. Search it on any platform, The Contagious Five. But either way, so Kyle, as you know, my new business partner, we're starting a new venture, right? I'm still doing Congruent. I'm still doing Automotive State of the Union. I'm still doing this, right? Where do I get the time? I don't know. But um, we started a company that's called Contagious Auto. It's going to be a training organization. We're building out an educational platform, helping dealers mar build marketing teams, internal marketing teams. And so all that to set up the fact that we were talking today and he said, you know, this is the first post I ever saw of you that I hit the like button. And two weeks later, we were on a Zoom call. And that was, I don't know, what's the date on this sucker? One year ago. So here's a piece of content. Let me put up the here. Can we get you to autofocus? Not quite. There it is. There's the piece of content. It's a basic LinkedIn post where I shared another video and a Zoom that I was on. And I said, you know, every two weeks we have a great marketing discussion with dealers. If you're a marketing director in automotive, you should check it out. Here's a little summary of the last one. You know how many likes it has? How many do you think? Four. A piece of content that I shared that has four likes built and migrated and evolved into this relationship I have now with a business partner and a company that we've started and this movement that is going that has a lot of is gaining momentum very quickly our speed to authority in that company is growing quickly and often I hear people starting out in the social media journey or the content posting journey get discouraged because no one likes my post no one sees it and I can't measure the ROI directly all of those thoughts are poison to the ROI you can have by making content and putting it out there because you cannot measure the ROI of a post, one single piece of content by the number of likes that it gets. I've had posts, I mean, probably my most popular post ever probably had 100,000, 110,000 views I've had a lot of videos that have 10,000, 5,000. So four likes on a thing is like, right? It's just like, why did I bother? It could be really easy to think of that. But the funny thing is about social media content, especially on LinkedIn, is that what, you only need the right one person to see it. You don't need 1,000 or 10,000 or 100,000. You might need it for your ego. You might need it for your ego. But you don't need it to get an ROI and then if you understand the ROI isn't instantly measurable and you don't measure yourself on how many likes it gets, you'll find out that actually the ROI of posting content is a very broad game. It's playing a very broad game when it's easy to see it as a narrow game. It's easy to see it as likes, followers, results from this piece of content. Easy to see it from that, but I'm telling you it's not. This post proves it. I made this post because I agreed to be part of a marketing roundtable discussion because somebody asked me and, you know, there were times where I'm like, man, is this, is this valuable? Is this worth it? Should I be spending my time on this? But things migrate from one to the other. I like to say I'm a professional dot collector. I picked that up from somebody else at some point, a professional dot collector. I'll take this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. And all of a sudden, every once in a while, I begin to see the path through the dots right? Like it's almost like a star constellation. You see all the stars and then it's like, oh, look, it's the Big Dipper. Oh, it's Orion's belt. And that's kind of how I, I view social media and being involved in creating content is by putting out the dots and then every once in a while, you can see your way through it. So that one piece of content has now led to a relationship, a business partnership, and what I hope to be a whole lot of provision in the future for myself, for my family, which means freedom, which means enjoyment of life and all of these things. So if you're posting content today, know that the ROI of that content might not be fully realized until 
in this case, a year later. And if Kyle never brought this up and never, you know, never brought this to my attention, I would have forgotten about it and never realized it. And I couldn't share it with you. So some of you might know that I was one of the very first people accepted into the Vayner Mentors program. So if you know who Gary V is, Gary Vaynerchuk, um, they had a mentorship program that they started. It's called Vayner Mentors now, and it's a lot bigger thing. But at the time, I got an email from his then COO, James Orsini, who's now the president of the Sasha Group, saying, hey, we're about to start this program. I think you should apply to be in it. And, you know, long story short on how James and I met and all that, I'll tell it another time. But either way, I applied and 90 people applied. They accepted three. I was one of them. So, you know, you go in and you work with Gary directly and his executive team directly to build and scale your business. And this is so funny when I think about it. So this is probably about three years ago. And at the time, I had just started on LinkedIn. I was building and scaling my company, obviously. I'm, I feel like I'm in New York City, in Hudson Yards, looking at the Statue of Liberty on the 25th floor of, of you know, this Hudson Yards building with Gary Vaynerchuk and his executive team. And I, at the time, I think I had like, I don't know, a couple hundred followers, two, three hundred followers on Instagram. And, you know, I still don't have a lot of followers on Instagram. Like, well, it's all perspective, right? 1,300, something like that. But I remember like I really wanted to get to 500. And I said something to him. I was like, what, what would you say to me? Like, how do I get to like 500 followers? Like, and at the time I saw that as a really respectable number. Like, it's a respectable number, 500, because in LinkedIn, I was like 500 plus connections. And Gary was like this. He's like, why? He's like, I mean, probably just for your ego, right? Because there's nothing we talked about where that would be part of your business execution. And I was like, oh, that one cut me deep, Gary. That one cut me deep. But he's right. Like, he just calls it like he sees it. And I wanted 500 followers on Instagram for my ego to make myself feel better. And the tie-in is that if you're creating social media for your ego, at least be able to call it that and understand it. Don't say it's for business development and try to measure yourself on likes and the effectiveness of this post and that post on a regular ongoing basis to determine whether or not there's an ROI on your effort. If you can separate and say like, okay, this is for my ego, this is for business development. If you can just be aware of that, then you're going to be more patient with your social media execution. Because look, if your ego rises and falls with the number of likes or the effectiveness of on the ROI measurement of one post, well, then you're in trouble. If, if mine did and my ego is resting on it, I would have stopped after that one post that had four likes but actually unlocked a whole world of opportunity and possibility and a really brought a really great relationship into my life. So that's my word for today. I hope it got, gets you thinking. I hope it gives you a little clarity and perspective on where you are right now so you understand where you wanna go. I'm just trying to be a little honest and transparent um, with what it is that I'm doing. Speaking of what I'm going to be doing, I have a whole lot of travel and events coming up. Let me see. I didn't plan on doing this, but let me get the calendar in front of me. So um, on November 4th through the 6th, I will be at Glenn Lundy's Grow Your Business for God's Sake event in Lexington, Lexington Kentucky. Um, on uh, November 13th, through the 16th or 14th through the 16th, I'll be speaking at the AAAS Summit. That's the Automotive Attributions, Attribution and Analytics Summit. It's a Brian Pash event, really great in Palm Beach. Um, what else are we doing? I'm gonna be speaking at the Marine Retailers Association of America. Yes, not cars, but boats, right? This is good, we're moved from cars to boats. It's gonna be so much fun. And that's in Austin um, on December 8th. So if you're, if you're a boater, if you're a marine retailer, please check that out. It'll be a virtual event as well. Heading over right from there to Miami to go to the NAMED, which is the National Association of Automotive Dealers. A lot of acronyms today. National Association of Minority Auto Dealers. Um, I was awarded um, the Diversity Advocacy Award from that organization, which is a national organization. So I'm going to uh, accept the award in person. And I heard that NAMED uh, parties and events are some of the best in the industry. So I'm really looking forward to that. So uh, that's a good part of my travel schedule for the end of the year. So if you're going to be in those areas, I would love to meet you in person. Please, if you see me, make sure you say hi. Until next time, keep pursuing that clarity and I'll talk to you soon. We can